my visual interest has always been the horizon line and looking out. And the interesting part of that is that, as we all know, the horizon line doesn't actually exist. So it's very elusive and it has a lot of connotations about what it means or doesn't mean. And Michael, on the other hand, his focus with the work that he's doing from the beach is to look straight down with his viewfinder. So you have an artist who's looking straight out, an artist who's looking straight down. So it kind of comes together in this convergence. We found out that we had a, a lot of philosophical questions or ideas or things to discuss and we got talking and it was the time of the pandemic and nobody was doing anything about any, you know, just passing time and we decided that maybe we would collaborate. So that's how we got started. Yeah. And, um, it's not easy to collaborate with somebody if you're an artist because you've got to let go of a lot in order for the other person to put forth what it is they have to come forth with. It, it was amazingly easy. I expected it to be a, a, a more of a struggle, but it was amazingly easy. Once I learned to just say, okay, I'm not going to concern myself with it, let's just move forward. And um, even the difficult pieces, when we would have a piece up that uh, we were working on that we would just run into a dead end and um, we would just keep pushing, just pushing forward. Kind of like what Soul of Wit says, you know, you once you start a piece, you can't stop it and start it again. You're starting a new piece, you have to keep working through what you have. So we did that, and you know, we pushed, and we pushed forward. And uh, we were surprised at how well we liked what we were doing. We uh, decided early on that there were no mistakes. So we were just gonna do it. and. Um, and that's worked out well for us, I gotta say. Uh, really set us free. So yeah. when you're collaborating, you're not, you know, you're not convicting another one of what they're doing is right or wrong because there are no mistakes. So with that, you're just buoyed up with a lot of freedom. So we did, we tried a lot of technique, a lot of throwing paint, scraping paint, wiping paint off, and trying different techniques, even one which involved at one point actually running over the piece with the car. We were so frustrated and so I was at my wit's end and folded up the painting and ran it over with the car and it was fabulous. We were so freaked out what running over a painting can do. That's one of those periods where I had to let go. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, She'll run you over. Yeah. <laughs> and other times, really, um, it went well, but there were times when I was really, really struggling. As Michael gave me this um, kind of a direction he said for me was, can you look back out at the horizon from the other side and that's completely existential and to look at something you know so well and I'm at home with it's a landmark for me it's what I do and to reverse it and go back through it is where we kind of came into time the poet Billy Collins gave me the title as a painter 
as a horizonologist. So mm -hmm. I was really kind of captured into that position. So to give that up, that's what I was known for. That was my signature. I never signed any of my paintings or signed on the back, but you knew it was my work. Now I don't know if you can look at that and go, hmm, that's Cynthia Knott's hand in that or not. Um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what it is, but it's exciting and it's new and it's fresh and it's um, authentic. Really? So many times, man, I would just kind of look at it thinking, I don't know about this. And then she just pulled the magic out of the hat, you know, and made it happen. And that's not something you learn, uh, except by putting a lot of time and work into it, you know. And she, she just knows how to use color and how to work with the symbology that I'm giving her, you know, and, and we, we work on it together, you know, we, um, if she takes the lead, I'm kind of like the designated hitter, you might say, you know, oh. uh, and, but we get into it, we get into most of every one of them together, sometimes I'll be doing something else and I'll come back and it'll be finished, so, <laughs> but for the most part, all of them are, are collaboration between two of us, especially, you know, the fact, fact that, we're starting with a photograph, mm -hmm. so that is the beginning impetus for it. And we, and, and we look at it, it's like the one on the wall back there. You kind of look at it and you think, that's just a bunch of circles, you know. But you think about the, 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 the time immortal, you know, it's a primordial uh, vision there that you're looking at. And how do you interpret that? I mean, it's part of us, it's part of our history. It's been there since time began. And, to work with it and, and interpret it like, like this one. Now, how did we come up with that? I mean, it just spoke to us, and we just kept working with it. And that's one of those where we work and we work and we work and we came back and we worked some more. So we finally came upon this and we said, that's it. And there's times where we've worked too much on it and have to back off. And then we are in agreement about, you know, washing it down with turpentine or scraping it all off with a palette knife. And in the using of the palette knife and scraping and rubbing things down, creates a skin of memory and process. And then within that skin of memory and process, Michael and I start seeing something there, some symbol, some analogy, some direction and it's from there that we start to find the content. Well, we both are great lovers of process. We really love the process and venturing into mixed media frees him up and frees me up also. So it means anything that we use or we want to do because there's no rules, there's no mistakes, we can work with it. Our, our ability to pull art history into our work is really interesting. And it's kind of boundless. There's an amazing amount of information out there. And we, we're excited by that and we, look then to Michael was really keen on reading Joseph Campbell as we worked, the interviews that he did. And it was really fabulous for me because I was not as aware of him as Michael was. And so it was a little bit new for me. And being read to by a gentleman with a southern accent was the best. Mm. Joseph Campbell might object, but I loved it. I was just thinking about Joseph Campbell, you know, and how he, he looked at it. Um, he, he didn't really look at it from a religious viewpoint. He looked at it from a cultural viewpoint. And going back in history and how far back man relates to symbology and 
mysticism and how these things have stigmas that are attached to them. It's just, um, it's, it's part of us that we don't even know is there. And then when you start reading the Eastern philosophies, you read Joseph Campbell, you read the Bible. There's lots of information in there that relates to our ancient past. And where did it come from? And then we start looking at these images and we start working with them and they start speaking to us. And it's not something that we're cognitively aware of as much as it is intuitive. Why well, we just take the ball and run with it, you know. And sometimes <laughs> it works and sometimes we go back and scrape it off. Yeah. <laughs> it's a yeah. People see different things in them. The, the thing that's amazed me quite a bit is that even though we both come from two different disciplines and uh, the, the photography I think is a lot more structured than painting, uh, but uh, it's still a discipline and you have to work within that discipline and the fact that we've been able to come together and bring these two worlds together and work and then I look at the work and you know, no, no two of them are alike. It's not like we've developed a style for doing something, it's just like we just keep evolving. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it's, it's, it's a journey, you know? I feel kind of like a pilgrim on this journey, you know? I'm, I'm just going along in awe of, of it all. We are, we're in awe every time we start getting somewhere, we really feel in awe. And which took us to one of the particles in Michael's work, being that he's looking down at sand, and when you magnify and micro-magnify this sand, it actually has roots, it looks like a tree. It's a piece of coral. Mm. So it has these roots and trees, and that brought us to thinking about the root of Jesse, which is ancient out of the Bible, with the line of David, King David, and then cross-referencing into poetry and the history of poetry as well. We found that there was a wonderful poem written by Yeats after the, the First War, and it was called The Second Coming. And it's a lot like we could compare to where we were after the pandemic, in that none of us know what's gonna happen, absolutely nothing. We're not secure yet again, we're still pondering. And um, so we're using many different forms of art to bring us to where we're getting. And we always are listening to jazz, which we both love. I suppose that it's worth saying that, you know, we, we both were uh, itching to do something. Yeah, the pandemic, true. the pandemic had hit, we were in isolation as everybody else was. Uh, and uh, so we just wanted to do something. And, and I had these pictures that I had been going out to the beach for quite a while and photographing. Uh, I was just uh, intrigued with these sand patterns, these soil patterns, where the ocean comes in and out all day long, all night long. And, and, it, and it changes. I mean, every day you go out and you look down, it's like a different place. And uh, then we took those pictures and we put them up and we just started playing with them. And this continued till today, when we were working on this picture up here, it's play. You know, we're looking for ideas in there, we're looking for symbology in there, we're looking for, you know, there's a figure of a, anatomy in there, there's some lips in there, and where do we take that? We, we take it and we work with it, and, and we don't know where it's going. We just are kind of following our intuition to see what happens. Thank you for watching this episode of Sulphur Artist Talks. 
Sulphur Studios is a project of Arts Southeast, a nonprofit whose mission is to make Savannah a destination for art and culture in the Southeast by supporting established and emerging artists, engaging a diverse community with creative programming, and developing awareness and appreciation of the arts. This content is made possible by viewers like you. If you'd like to support our mission, please visit us at www.sulphurstudios.org to learn more. You can also reach out to us via email at info at On behalf of Sulphur Studios, I wish you well and hope to see you next time. Thank you.